Welcome to our presentation on towards multi-sequence MR image recovery from undersampled case-based data. Our work focuses on speedy recovery of multiple undersampled MR sequences. My name is Chang. I am a first-year PhD student at the University of Maryland, advised by Professor Ramachalapa. Recovering MR sequences from undersampled data has been of significant research interest as it can accelerate MR acquisitions. Traditionally, uh, MR machines acquire signals in the case space and perform inverse Fourier transforms to convert the signal to the image space. Such an acquisition is a time-consuming process, which limits the availability of MR machines and may be prone to motion artifacts. Ideally, we like to sample only part of the case space and recover the degraded information through algorithms uh, to speed up acquisition. It's worth noting that uh, for the purpose of this work, we consider recovery as a post-processing step after all uh, the case space acquisition is done. To give some more background, there are many factors that influence MR acquisition time. The relevant ones for us include the sampling trajectory, uh, the sampling resolution, and the number of sampling sequences. Sampling trajectory determines the pattern of which case space data is acquired. Sampling resolution determines how many points on the case space are measured, and sampling sequences are used to highlight specific regions or materials, for instance, for fluid or tumors, which are useful for diagnostic purposes. Generally speaking, uh, the most widely used sampling trajectory is Cartesian sampling, and the most convenient way to undersample is by reducing measurements in the phase encoding dimension the undersampled case space signals uh, generate low quality MR images. Uh, Reason works focus on recovering single sequences from degraded acquisitions by using convolutional neural networks. <coughs> there are also some works that attempt to complete the case space with uh, varying success. In our work, we are interested in the scenario where multiple sequences need to be taken in one session. This provides an advantage where we can exploit the highly correlated information across different sequences, assuming that they're taken in one scanning session and that the patient maintains a relatively stable position during the scan so that the pixels are relatively aligned. Under this scenario, we like to answer the question of uh, how much does the shared information help multi-sequence reconstruction and what's the best undersampling strategy? Uh, while accounting for factors like different acquisition time for different sequences. And we use standard metrics like PSNR and SSIM to measure performance of recovery. Uh, to give a concrete example, let's look at two sequences, a T1 and T2 flare, of the same patient. We can observe that the two sequences contain very similar information. In fact, most of the information observed in T1 can also be observed in flare. However, the reverse may not be true. For instance, uh, the tumor is not very visible in T1. On the other hand, T2 flare takes a lot longer to be acquired than T1, so it is not immediately clear how to obtain the best undersampling strategy. Um, and that's an important piece of information because we can optimize performance better with a, a specific undersampling strategy as opposed to optimize for all potential or all possible strategies. And the essence of our work is to provide an algorithm to find such a strategy. To begin with our exploration, we need to set up a standard CNN model for all of our experiments to keep everything fair. In our case, we employ the residual dense network or RDN as the basis for our network structure. This model architecture has been shown to perform better than UNet-based architectures uh, in tasks like super resolution and denoising. We modify RDN to fit our use to simultaneously take multiple undersampled sequences as input and output multiple recovery sequences. So what are some of the ways that can be used to find a good undersampling strategy? Um, so there are some obvious choices. Firstly, we can use the same undersampling strategy for every single sequence. Uh, it's, it's relatively intuitively clear that um, this may not be the best approach, given that the time cost is different for every sequence, and that 
it is harder to explore the shared information between sequences when they are similarly uh, degraded. Secondly, we can employ a brute force method by training a network for every possible undersampling strategy and choose the best performing one uh, to use. However, this is uh, expensive and infeasible. We can also directly measure the PSNR of sequences uh, degraded by different undersampling strategies and choose the strategy that yields the best PSNR. Uh, the advantage here is that we don't need to train any model. This approach, however, comes with the issue that PSNR doesn't always measure the information presented in the sequences accurately. So an example would be aliasing, which may be produced by undersampling the case space slightly, but affects PSNR disproportionately more. Some degree of aliasing can be pretty well corrected by CNNs. Uh, so this uh, direct measurement approach potentially causes some good undersampling strategies to be overlooked. Another example is that we can have a combination of extremely undersampled sequences and highly sampled sequences, which may lead to an overall lower PSNR. However, CNNs can learn to leverage the similarities between different sequences and reconstruct uh, the severely undersampled sequences pretty well. So this also creates a case where um, the direct measurement uh, approach can miss out on good undersampling strategies. Instead of measuring the PSNRs of degraded MR sequences uh, directly, which suffers from inaccuracies in measuring the impact of certain artifacts and the correlated information between sequences, we propose to train a CNN network to recover sequences that are degraded in various degrees, and then measure the PSNR of the recovered sequences. We call such a network a blind recovery model, or BRM, which is optimized for recovery over L1 or L2 constraints. <clears throat> the key point here is that BRM does not recover sequences optimally for any particular sampling strategy because it has to accommodate for all of them. However, we can use a BRM uh, that is trained to optimize the PSNR metric as a way to account for factors that were hard to be measured directly on degraded sequences. To elaborate on the details, given a set of available sequences, their respective sampling time, and assuming for Cartesian sampling, we can express all possible undersampling strategies with a, a simplex under a particular time constraint Tmax. At each iteration during training, we can select a random strategy from all possibilities and use it to generate the corresponding undersample sequences, which then are, are fed to BRM for training. For this work, we use two datasets for experiments, one of which is a privately collected multi-sequence dataset containing raw case-based data for T1, T2, and T2 flare. 20 patients participated and overall produced close to 3,000 pair images. To expand and test our idea on larger datasets, we selected 167 scans from the BRATS dataset, which are co-registered in T1, T2, and T2 flare. We then simulated their case-based data. Uh, we like to know that the simulated case-based data is somewhat different from real data, um, such as the fact that the simulated case space would be conjugate symmetric. This can lead to some discrepancies in terms of performance uh, for real data. The results are visualized uh, in this graph. In the graph on the left, we observe two things. First is that simultaneously recovering multiple sequences together, labeled as MIMO, uh, performs much better than recovering sequences individually, which is labeled as SISO. Secondly, the PSNR of the recovery sequences is generally well correlated with that of the degraded inputs, which is indicated by the red line. However, this is not always the case in regions. To know whether a particular strategy performs best when a CNN optimized solely on that strategy, we need to train dedicated models for all strategies and then compare. While that is clearly infeasible to do for all strategies, we can do so for a selected number of them to show, to show local performance. In our experiment, we selected a region where the PSNR of the degraded inputs and the BRM outputs do not correlate well. 
such as the one circled in blue. Uh, we then train a dedicated recovery model for every undersampling strategy in that region to observe which approach correlates better um, to the dedicated model uh, performance. We find that, as shown in the graph on the right, uh, the PSNR performance of dedicated models, uh, which is the green line, is highly correlated with that of the blind recovery model, and in fact negatively correlated with the PSNR of the degraded inputs. This agrees with our hypothesis that PRM can indeed be used as a better guide to select good undersampling strategies. Once we use BRM to find the undersampling strategy, uh, we can fine-tune the strategy very quickly based on the trained BRM to achieve performance similar to that from dedicated models. The entire pipeline is shown in this graph. Now, we show some visual results here on the recovery image quality under different training settings. Uh, based on our real data sets, we find that the undersampling strategy is to distribute most of the sampling to the T2 sequence. Uh, this is under the assumption that all sequences take the same amount of time to acquire. We find that to be intuitively reasonable as T2 provides the best contrast on details. Uh, the details can then be shared to recover other sequences. We can change the presumed sequence-specific time cost by adjusting the variables in the simplex formulation in slide 12 and obtain all possible undersampling strategies under a different setting. Uh, here, the time costs are just two, uh, such that flare takes much longer to acquire than T2, which takes much longer to acquire than T1. Uh, this is more closely related to real scanning conditions. In this case, we find that the best sampling strategy uh, is still to sample T2 the most of all three sequences. However, T2 is sampled less compared to when sequences have the same time costs and the leftover sampling portion is used to sample T1 more, as T1 can be more quickly acquired. Uh, this is consistent with our expectation, as ideally the sampling strategy should maximize the total energy sampled in the case space, as Parcival's theorem would indicate. In this table, we list some more uh, quantitative results for the top performing under sampling strategies. An interesting thing to observe is that uh, for a scenario of equal acquisition time costs, for real data, the top sampling or undersampling strategies flip-flop between sampling T1 or T2 flare more, indicating that they are of similar importance for recovery. However, on simulated data, flare is consistently sampled more than T1. This is most likely due to the different distributions between datasets, as Brad's dataset investigates brain tumors, and tumors have much better contrast on flare than on T1. The real data set is collected on healthy subjects, therefore implying that FLARE will less often contain uh, unique information. In conclusion, we proposed a learning-based method to address the multi-sequence recovery problem. Uh, specifically, we leveraged a RDM-based network to solve for such a recovery problem in a data-driven way and introduced an efficient algorithm to determine the best undersampling strategy for acquiring multiple sequences. We show with empirical evidence that our algorithm produces an undersampling strategy that is highly correlated with the ideal one, uh, as indicated by performance from dedicated models, while not having to exhaustively train dedicated models for every possibility. This makes the search problem computationally feasible. Uh, we show that uh, the found sampling strategies are generally consistent with mathematical constraints and our intuition. Uh, with that in mind, we'd like to thank the audience for their interest and time in listening to this presentation. Uh, we appreciate any advice or suggestions on our work. Thank you.